all right welcome back to the channel so in this video what I'm going to be doing is going over uh, the programming that I use for the hobby wing uh, ESC I'm also going to demonstrate why uh, if you're going to run a hobby wing ESC in my opinion uh, it's important to combine that with a BEC because the internal BEC that the hobby wing has is just not up to the challenge if you start putting in uh, aftermarket servos and start running 8.4 volts and that kind of stuff it, the, the hobby wing ESC is not capable of, of handling the load we're going to put on it so I'm going to go over uh, basically how I got my hobby wing program so I got the nice smooth excellent control very high resolution on the stick and it's just a, a, a much easier RC to control. It doesn't go too fast, doesn't go too slow. It's right on the money in my opinion. So I'll, I'll go over the settings and uh, yeah, let's get into it. First up, what I'm just gonna do is a quick demonstration on why if you're gonna run a Hobby Wing 1080, uh, you're going to want to have a BEC. So what I have right here is I do have my BEC hooked up, but these are the power leads that come off of it, so it's not actually hooked up into the receiver. I've got the, a regular plug going from the ESC into the receiver, so that's where we're going to be getting our power. And uh, yeah, so let's just see what happens when you run uh, high, high amp servos on a, on a, on a, a, a weak ESC. All right, so, I mean, it kind of looks like everything works until you start hitting them switches, and then you start having these brownouts. So what ends up happening is, because the amp load from, I'm, I'm hitting the rear servos, there's two of them, so because the amp load on the two rear servos to lift all that weight is more than the, the ESC can handle, it ha what happens is a brownout. Uh, it trades the amp overload for voltage, brings down the, the pack voltage, and it hits like a, a low cell cutoff. There we go. Simple as that. After a couple of seconds, it'll come back, the voltage goes back up, and then it seems like everything is okay. That's what happens when you run uh, the, the standard internal Beck from the Hobbywing 1080 ESC. So if we're gonna run this kind of a, a ESC on these low riders, we really need to get a BEC to pair it up. And that way you don't have these problems as you'll see in a second. So what I'm doing is I'm just switching out the connector where I have my uh, connector that has the power lead disconnected. Now we can plug the BEC back in. All right, so now we are powered back through the BEC. Now you'll notice I can go ape shit on them servos and it don't matter. Now you'll also notice with the, the ESC and the BEC that I have, there's barely any amp drop, or voltage drop. And a 0 0.1, 0 0.2 voltage drop on two servos hitting at the same time. That's exactly what we want to see. So yeah, that goes for, if you're gonna run a BEC, you're gonna wanna get, sorry, if you're gonna run the Hobby Wing 1080 BEC, you're gonna wanna run one of the Castle uh, BECs in order to make sure that the servos have all the power that they need and now what we're going to do is get into the programming right. when it comes to the endpoints for the throttle stick that will be number two so hold on so there we go, 60% for throttle and 50% for reverse. And this basically slows down the RC so we have the smoothest operation and sticks that have the most resolution possible. 
And um, in the future, if you do want to make any adjustments to how fast the RC goes, uh, this is where you're going to want to go to. Channel 2 inside the endpoints. Uh, the higher the number on the either point is going to increase the speed. So uh, faster, raise this number up from 60 on the, the upswing. And then faster from reverse, raise the number up from 50 on the downswing. But I mean, I find that these settings right here is a very tame and easy to control RC for low riding. Uh, if you if you want to go over 60, you're starting to get to a to a, a fast RC. Hopefully, <laughs> programming when it comes to the 1080 is very very easy. Uh, they give us the program box with the ESC, so you don't need to get a secondary piece. And with the plug you have provided here, there's a direct connection port right on the top of the ESC, so it's really easy to connect it up. Just make sure you put the, the sensor wire in the right place. Connect it up. Plug it in, and then turn the power on. All right. Now, when making adjustments, it's very easy. Uh, when you're on the number numbered item for the, the list over here, you use this button here, the value button, to change the selection. And once you've chosen what you want, here we want to, you have to press OK. Once it presses OK, it sends it into the box, sends it into the ESC, and you move on to the next one change the value to what you need, press OK, and then move on to the next one. I'm going to I'm gonna go through all the, the settings, but I'm going to fly through the ones that aren't really important. Uh, the first one is the running mode, forward brake, forward reverse brake, forward reverse. Uh, we want this on number two, so we have forward reverse brake, pretty simple. Uh, if you're going to be running uh, the LiPo battery, you have to have this set up to either LiPo or nickel metal hydride. Uh, depending on what you're using. We're, we're on this for LiPo, so it's most likely going to be in the, the number one setting. So yeah, number two, we have it on LiPo. Uh, number three, this is cutoff voltage. Because this is a hop build, I don't want to have any low voltage cutoff inside the ESC. So this is, for me, is disabled. Now, if you want to have low voltage protection for if you're driving the car around, you're cruising, and you don't want to get into a low voltage situation from cruising and whatnot, then you can have these auto settings put on. You don't really need most of the time to go above a low setting, but for a hot build where you want all the power, you don't want to have any brownouts while trying to hop or anything like that, you want to have this all the way turned off. Then we go to initial start force. Now, initial start force, uh, basically, I keep this on the default setting. I haven't found any need to adjust it off of the, the default setting, but it seems to work extremely well with it on number three, so it's a good place to leave it. Then we've got max force. Now, when it comes to the power, uh, I like to use the ESC to control how much power delivery is getting is going through the... Uh, uh, the, the motor. So when it comes to max force, I keep this limited to 50%. So on the ESC, both forward and reverse, my max f uh, power is limited to 50%. And then as we go into six, it goes over to the backside. So six, we have max reverse force. It's the same thing. I have it at 50%. Uh, max brake force, I have it set to 100 uh, I found if once I reduced it off here, it seems like the brakes don't work at all. It's almost impossible to stop the RC. So I keep my max brake for max brake force at 100. Same with initial brake, I have it at zero. We don't need any drag brakes or any initial brakes or anything like that. So when it comes to initial brake, have that set to zero. Uh, same thing, drag brake, uh, have that also set to zero. We don't want any drag brake holding. We want nice and freewheel when we're not on the throttle or the brakes or reverse. 11 is going to be neutral range and the neutral range is default. I have it at uh, 0.05. Again, uh, these are the types of settings where you only really go and mess with it. If you have a problem running with the, the LR, LR6X controller, these things seem to be fine in the default position. So that's just where I leave them. Uh, start mode punch. Again, I leave this in default position. Number three would be level three. Again, uh, if you run into an issue where you're, uh, you're you're stripping gears when you're when you're hitting the throttle or something like that, then I would start to go in here to reduce this. But having this on three different chassis and 
spending over a year running these RCs all with the exact same settings. This seems to work pretty good, not too strong, not too weak. Uh, this here is the important setting that we're coming up on. 13, PWM frequency. This is gonna be one of the more important settings of this setup, because this is gonna dictate how smooth the throttle is on the RC. And when it comes to low speed and what we're doing, we wanna have it as smooth as possible. So the idea here is to turn this all the way up to 16,000, 16K. So it's gonna be number five. Now, this is gonna basically ask for the most performance out of the motor, at the same time giving the smoothest performance from the motor. So it's basically, what I feel this delivers is the smoothest performance inside the, the window that we're looking for. Uh, after that, it's gonna be Beck voltage. Now, if you're not using uh, a BEC, you're gonna have to run this at 7.4, otherwise everything's gonna be weaker than it was with the original BEC. But even then, uh, the internal Beck doesn't have the amp ability that we need for you know high-end servos on this. So the idea here would be it, not, it doesn't matter because you'd be running on a, uh, an external BEC. Uh, freewheeling, make sure you have that freewheeling enabled. We want to have the car able to roll when it's on and make sure that uh, it's not brake dragging or anything like that. And then after, once you've made your values, you, you know, you, you, you select OK, everything's good. Then you'll turn off the, e, the ESC, disconnect it, and the next time you turn it on, the settings that you just put in will now be inside and ready for rolling. And so what I'm gonna do right now, I'm just gonna recap all my settings so you can see them all one at a time. So to recap, one is two, item two is number one, item three is number one, item four is number three, item five is number two, item six is number two, item seven is number nine, item eight is number one, 9 is number 1, 10 is number 1, 11 is number 4, 12 is number 3, 13 is number 5, 14 is number 2, and 15 is number 1. There you have it. Now if you notice, I mean, the smoothness, oh wait, I gotta turn this on. The smoothness that you have on these sticks is just unmatched. And there you have it. So that's basically uh, the setup that I have on the Hobbywing to get the smoothest performance and uh, get the most out of the ESC that we can. With that, I mean, uh, Thank you for all the likes, subscribes, and shares. Channel's really starting to take off. I really appreciate everything. Got a lot of good stuff coming up. Got my screw, my screw kit in. Booyah, Kasha, Skunk Customs, man. If you don't know, you better check it out. And uh, yeah, as soon as I get the parts in from a Red Cat and the bearings from eBay, I'm gonna get these screws together and start building a. Uh, uh, a chassis out of the spare parts that I got. So with that, uh, I'll see you in the next one.